Super Smash Brothers is often heralded as one of the greatest fighting game franchises of all time. This is partly because the gameplay is extremely unique compared to most 2D fighting games, but the biggest reason that Smash Bros is so iconic is that it brings together so many beloved franchises into one single game. The characters from these franchises, of course, are the biggest draw in what sells these games, but Super Smash Bros. has also made a name for themselves in making very unique, almost cinematic stages that feature different mechanics and environments that you won't see in any other fighting game. We really have no idea still about which existing stages will be returning or not, but either way, there's bound to be at least a few completely new stages, and I've already come up with a few ideas of stages that I'd personally like to see make an appearance. <laughs> to this day, almost halfway through 2018, you still can't go to the Nintendo Switch Reddit page without seeing someone talking about how they wish they would have played Super Mario Odyssey or Breath of the Wild sooner. Both of these games won literally hundreds of Game of the Year awards each last year and will probably be hailed as two of the best Nintendo games of all time for at least the next hundred years. For this reason, there is no chance at all that both of these games won't get at least one stage each in Smash for Switch. New Donk City is the obvious pick for Mario, as this is really the iconic environment from Super Mario Odyssey. I'm picturing something similar to the four side stage from Melee, but I think everyone's ideal Metro Kingdom stage would probably travel through that amazing festival celebration sequence at the end of that kingdom, with the superstar song playing in the background to boot. Another cool Odyssey idea that I had would be some type of journey across Bowser's kingdom, leading up to his castle. Bowser's Castle has never really gotten a real stage in Smash, which is really surprising, so it would be cool to see alongside that whole kingdom as well, which really had one of the best aesthetics in Mario Odyssey, at least in my opinion. As for Link and Zelda, it's really tough to call what this stage's theme could be. Like I said, Breath of the Wild is the greatest game of all time, and we already know that Breath of the Wild Link is going to be in the game, so there's really no doubt that we'll get one. But I don't know, there's really no one definitive kingdom from this game that everyone thinks is best. I mean, I definitely prefer the Zora Kingdom, but I don't think that's a commonly shared opinion among everyone. Ideally, there could be some sort of traveling stage that just visits each kingdom separately, as well as their respective divine beasts, but considering how big that world is, I don't know how they could actually justify that. I've also heard the idea being thrown around of the Great Plateau, which sounds great, but when I actually thought about it, the Great Plateau is really just a microcosm of the whole game in itself, and there's no absolute specific part of that area that feels super memorable to me, but I don't know. Like I said, it's tough to call which part of this massive game they could take out to put in Smash, but this is definitely one of those games we know a stage will be pulled from. Continuing with the very obvious choices towards the front of this video, there has got to be at least one Splatoon map as well. The Inklings are already confirmed as playable characters, and Splatoon itself has garnered one of the most cult-like, rabid fan bases that I've ever seen, so it's gotta be there. They could just bring over one specific stage, with my favorite picks being Black Belly Skate Park or Moray Towers. One stage I think is very likely to be there, and one I'd actually like to see is Shifty Station. It could feature an RNG factor similar to the Mario Maker level in the 3DS version of Smash, where it cycles through randomly generated obstacles each match, along with shifting platforms making it difficult to traverse from one side to the other of the map. Other than specific actual stages, I think an Inkopolis stage would be pretty cool, and hopefully there'd be a Splatfest going on so we could see all those pretty lights, and of course a performance from either Off the Hook or the Squid Sisters. Or hopefully both. One franchise that always gets a lot of attention in every Smash Bros game is Pokemon. Every new Smash game has seen at least two new Pokemon stages since Melee, so this Switch iteration is bound to have at least one. I have some slight doubts that we'll see a Sun and Moon themed map, but I really hope that it does happen. 
I think the pinnacle of my Sun and Moon experience was figuring out the story of the Aether Foundation. You first arrive at the Aether Paradise thinking you found some benevolent research foundation, but eventually uncover a villain much more evil than even Team Skull themselves. The aesthetics of this place are very distinct as well. It's a big artificial island with this sort of dystopian 1984 type of feel. There are a few other Sun and Moon locations like Vast Pony Canyon or the Pokemon League on top of the big mountain that could work, but Aether Paradise is really the coolest and most memorable part of Sun and Moon for me. Of course, I'd also be okay with just getting Pokefloats back. Please, Sakurai, just let me jump through the sky on the backs of giant Pokemon again, please. Kirby and Yoshi are another pair that always get at least one stage in every Smash game. Kirby Star Allies tried to carry a theme but really had no memorable parts that felt super different from previous titles to me, but if I had to reach, I'd say maybe the Fortress Jam Bastion could be a stage. Even the levels within Jam Bastion didn't really carry a common theme, but I'm trying here. Perhaps a better idea could revolve around the new King Dedede fight. Maybe you'd start in the throne room with a bunch of Waddle Dees stacking some fruit near the throne, and then throughout the fight, the stages four would break and we'd fall through to different rooms with some breakable obstacles, just like that real fight in Star Allies. As for Yoshi, I'd say it's pretty much a no-brainer that we get some sort of cardboard world in exchange for the old yarn world. This doesn't seem super exciting to me, and honestly, I'd much rather have some sort of Paper Mario world where they really nailed that type of paper aesthetic but either way, I'd say that the Cardboard Yoshi world is definitely happening. Continuing with this theme of easy kids games, I also think that Labo will make an appearance. Probably no playable characters from this, as there aren't really any prolific faces from that franchise yet, but I can definitely picture a new stage. Specifically, I'm picturing a living room type stage where it starts playing, then random Labo stats start to show up as obstacles, and then maybe come alive once they're fully built. Imagine fighting on top of a Labo piano as it's being built, and then having to dodge its musical notes that it produces once it comes to life. Considering the fact that Nintendogs is sort of dead with no real glimpse of life anytime soon, I think that a Labo living room would be a great replacement for the existing one. Wave Race is a beloved Nintendo franchise that has more recently been completely swept under the rug. There were of course some trophies and stickers themed around the game in recent Super Smash Bros titles, but other than that, this franchise has been all but forgotten. That all changed though a few days ago when series producer Shinya Takahashi said that he is working on some new games and that we may see a new wave race. If this is indeed true, I can definitely picture some sort of traveling style wave race stage in Smash, similar to the existing Mario Kart or F-Zero stages. This definitely isn't one of Nintendo's temple titles, but has enough of a fan base to justify getting a theme stage in Smash. Xenoblade Chronicles 2 will forever go down as part of the six first party titles that made the first year of the Switch such a huge success. Just like Splatoon, Xenoblade has become one of those temple franchises for Nintendo in the last decade. Rex is one of my top picks for characters that I'd like to see in this game, but if that doesn't happen, I hope that at the least we get a stage based around the amazing world of Allrest. It could simply be called Cloud Sea and cycle through a series of titans or ships traveling through it. Maybe you'd start on Gramps, then go to the ancient ship where you find Pyra and end up on a bigger titan like the Gormot province. Really just anything involved with the giant cloud sea from this game would turn out beautifully. The final first party game that I'll mention here is my favorite, which is of course, ARMS. There's so many options for stages here that it's hard to pick just one. I think a snake park with snake boards to ride on would be pretty cool. And it'd also be pretty funny considering most ARMS players actually hate this stage. So seeing it pop up in another game would just be too ironic and funny to pass up. Um, I think Ribbon Ring could also be a neat choice. Although it's small, the random boxes that pop up in the middle of the stage would translate nicely to a 2D environment and I think would kind of be a fun mechanic for Smash. I think that my biggest wish for an ARM stage in Smash is just to make it competitively viable, just so it's an homage to the other big competitive fighting game on Switch. Perhaps we could see something like Spring Stadium with the springboards on either side of the map making it difficult to be knocked off, but most of the stage just being a flat 
competitive one-on-one -on -one fighting stage. Um, I really just want this game to be in Smash Bros so badly though that I'll really just take any stage I can get. The last two ideas that I have come from third party titles, so they might be a little less likely to happen, especially at launch. The first is some sort of Ubisoft map, or more particularly, something like a Rayman stage. I couldn't pick out a specific, memorable enough Rayman stage, but I'd also be happy with a Mario Rabbids Kingdom battle stage. Perhaps a map where we're flying through the dimensional rift in the beginning, where we're watching the rabbits get turned into Mario creatures, or maybe a map from the spooky Halloween part of that game. Super Smash Bros has an increasing amount of third party games featured in recent titles, and judging by the close relationship of Ubisoft and Nintendo recently, I think it's a safe bet that we'll get some sort of Ubisoft game in the next Smash title. Even beyond accepting major third party developers though, is another big change that Nintendo has shown in their last few years, and that is a large affinity for indies. The Switch has quickly become the premier place for indie games, and most multi-platform independent releases have seen their largest numbers on the Switch eShop. Perhaps the biggest of all of these indie titles though, is Shovel Knight. Shovel Knight was actually released way back in 2014, but even in 2015, before the Switch was even a flicker on the horizon, we got the first third party amiibo, which was the official Shovel Knight amiibo for Wii U and 3DS. The game then became one of the first games to be released on the Switch when it came out day one alongside Breath of the Wild, Snipper Clips, and 1-2 Switch. Later in 2017, Nintendo announced three new Shovel Knight amiibo to be released this year along with the brand new King Knight campaign. I say all this to enforce the fact that Nintendo just loves Shovel Knight, and through this they've even grown to love other indie games as well. Heck, they even gave them their cute little name in Nindies, and they give them their own direct presentation twice a year now. Nintendo obviously has a soft spot for indies now, and Shovel Knight was the catalyst in not only Nintendo's changed perspective of indie games, but also the world's perspective. This is why I think Shovel Knight will not only be a playable character in this upcoming Smash game, but also might see a stage as well. My top two choices for a Shovel Knight map would be either the King Knight or Spectre Knight stages. Um, when I think back to this game, the first thing that I see is either of those two stages, so those just make the most sense to me. Whether or not we actually see any of these, I'm sure that the new stages in Smash for Switch are going to be insane. Like I said, this team has become known for making wild environments and an almost cinematic experience unlike anything you'd see in any other fighting game. Let me know your hopes for new stages down in the comments, leave a like on the video if you enjoyed, and subscribe to my channel for the latest Switch content available. This is Max from Max Culture, and thank you for watching.